Hey everybody, Katie here. In this video, we are going to discover transpositional and inversional equivalents of normal order pitch class sets. Composers often use transpositional and inversional equivalents to create coherence in their music. Together, we're going to learn how to determine whether two pitch class sets are equivalent by examining the features of the pitch class sets and comparing them to one another. Transpositional equivalents. In order to determine if two pitch class sets are transpositionally equivalent, we need to start with two sets that have the same number of pitch classes. For instance, we have two sets here with five pitch classes each. Two sets are transpositionally equivalent if they can be mapped onto one another by adding the same number to each pitch in the set. For example, we have 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, and 0, 1, 5, 6, 7. We know they are transpositionally equivalent by adding 10 to 2 to get 0, 10 to 3 to get 1, and so on. Why is it 10 and not negative 2, you might ask? We always transpose the first set into the second set, working left to right, going clockwise around the clock face. Therefore, our transpositional operator will always be a positive number. Now you try. These two pitch class sets are transpositionally equivalent. Can you find the transpositional operator? Pause your video now to try it for yourself. The two set classes are equivalent by T8. We know this by adding 11 to 8 to get 7, 2 to 8 to get 10, and 3 to 8 to get 11. You may also find it helpful to view this on the clock face to see each pitch moving the same amount around the clock face. Another way to compare pitch class sets is through the Adjacency Interval Series, or AIS for short. Again, in order to compare two sets, they must have the same number of pitch classes. The Adjacency Interval Series, or AIS, is the set of ordered pitch class intervals between adjacent pitch classes. For example, here are two sets that we have found to be transpositionally equivalent by T10. To find the AIS, Calculate the interval between each adjacent pitch class. For example, the interval between 2 and 3 is 1, the interval between 3 and 7 is 4, and so on. Do this for both sets. Observe that the AIS for both sets is exactly the same. Therefore, in transpositionally equivalent sets, the AIS will always be the same. This is a good way to check your work when finding transpositional equivalents. One quick thing about notation here. We use angled brackets for intervals, like in our AIS, and square brackets are used for pitch class sets in normal order. Keep your notation neat and be clear about your brackets. There are a lot of numbers floating around, and we want to keep them straight. Now you try. Find the AIS of these two pitch class sets, 11, 2, 3, and 7, 10, 11. Pause your video and calculate the AIS. The AIS is 3, 1 for both sets, which means they are transpositionally equivalent, and we can use this information to check the work we did in our previous example. The take-home message here is transposition preserves the intervals between pitch classes. Now let's talk about inversion. In order to find out if two pitch class sets are inversionally equivalent, we again have to start out with two sets with the same number of pitch classes. Two sets are inversionally equivalent if they can be mapped onto one another by inversion followed by transposition. What do I mean when I say that? Let's find out first if the two sets are inversions of one another by examining their AIS. Here's an example. The AIS of the first set is inverted, or reversed, in the second set. Therefore, inversionally equivalent sets will have adjacency interval series that are mutually retrogradable in some ordering of the set, which is not always the normal order. Okay, so we know that the AISs of these two sets are inversional, but let me repeat what I said earlier. Two sets are inversionally equivalent if they can be mapped onto one another by inversion followed by transposition. This means that any inversion will also include a transposition, even at T0. 
zero in this case is the index number, that is, the transpositional operator applied to an inversion. To find the index number of inversionally equivalent pairs, the first element in one set corresponds to the last element in the second set, the second element with the second to last, and so on. The addition of these two pitch class pairs equals the index number. So the best way to compare them is to create a rainbow connecting each element of the set to the other. Let's look at our first inverted example. Each addition of the pairs yields the number 10, informing us that these two sets are inversionally related and transposed by 10. We would notate this as T10 of I. Now you try. These two sets are inversionally related, as we can see from the AIS. Can you find the index number? Pause your video now and find the transposition. By making a rainbow, we can see the index number is 9, so we would write T9 of I to describe the inversional equivalence of these two sets. The take-home message here is, inversion preserves intervals between pitch classes, but reverses their contour around a point of inversion. That's it! Now you know how to find transpositional and inversional equivalents by comparing the AIS of two pitch class sets. Thanks for watching!